Hi. Um, it's Friday night, so I've watched a Friday night movie. And it was this. The 1517 to Paris, borrowed from my local library. Support your local library. Um, two DVDs for a week for £1.10. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> um, directed by Clint Eastwood, it's the story of the three uh, US military personnel who foiled the terror attack on that French train What was uh, that had that guy with that gun. And uh, it could have been awful, but um, no one was killed. Uh, everyone survived with a few major but recoverable injuries. But the film decides that it would be a really great idea to, number one, have the three men play themselves. Number two, um, tell the story of their lives. So we go right back to their childhood and they were non-conformist types. Um, they uh, had poor attention spans at school and their teachers thought that they needed to go on to medication, but their mothers decided, no, what they need is Jesus and guns, which is portrayed as a great thing. And Spencer Stone is portrayed as someone who really loves the idea of war, who really wants to go to war and help people and save lives in war, because that's what war's like. I mean, more people come back from war than go out. Obviously. I mean, why, would, why wouldn't why would so many people love war? Um, and we follow their lives, and it's slightly intercut with the uh, the early part of the terror attack, which just seems completely pointless because we pl see it play out fully anyway. Um, and firstly, they can't act. Secondly, the actors who play them as children are even worse. Thirdly, most of the rest of the cast are comedy actors. You've got Jenna Fisher from The Office, Judy Greer from Arrested Development, Tony Hale, also from Arrested Development and only in one scene, Thomas Lennon, um, Jaleel White from uh, Family Matters, who played Urkel, all in straight roles. And it's a really weird creative decision and doesn't really make any sense, particularly because um, Fisher and Greer are playing the mothers of two of them and are less than 20 years older than them. And although that's believable in context because they're proper, you know, God squad, so obviously they would have had children before they were 20 because they're induced to believe that women are there to produce children and not to have independent lives. My politics getting in the way a little bit. Um, uh, it seemed unrealistic. Um, the film is uh, shambles. Um, it's written by a woman who appears to be Clint Eastwood's typist, who has no previous film writing experience. Uh, she has one writing credit for a pilot of That's Entertainment, which is, I assume never went to series, which is obviously a, a ringing endorsement of her talent. Um, the dialogue is appalling. Um, I could write better dialogue right now, and I've had a glass of wine and half a beer. Um, the structure is illogical and makes no sense, and of the 83 minutes of the film once you cut the credits off, because it has a weirdly long end credit sequence. 25 minutes of those 83 minutes is devoted to them just wandering around Europe, having a holiday. It's like being forced, it's like a forced route march through someone else's holiday snaps. I don't care what these people did. I don't care about them going on holiday to Berlin, and the story doesn't fucking matter about what happened to them in Berlin. They go to a beer killer, they go to a rave. It doesn't Get on with it! The film is a joke. <laughs> it's terrible. And I have to kind of lay my cards on the table politics-wise. I'm not a huge fan of the military. And I'm not a huge fan of American imperialism. But this film goes out of its way to try and be an advert for... Isn't it great to join up to be the military? And to feel like you've got a purpose in life and feel like you've got a destiny to to help people rather than blow, go to foreign countries and blow their brains out. Um, the only reason why their attempt against the terrorists worked was because his gun jammed. So it is a thousand to one chance that they didn't have their brains blown out all over a French train carriage. So this could have been a very embarrassing failure rather than, but for a tiny quirk of mechanism, 
suddenly they're heroes. And I don't think they would have been quite so venerated had they not been American soldiers, if they'd been, say, ordinary tourists or from any other country in the world. The film is incoherent, it's badly acted, it doesn't really make sense in terms of structure and a point, and it feels like a recruitment ad, but it's so badly assembled and so badly thought out that it just looks completely incompetent. I'm quite a big fan normally of Clint Eastwood's work as a director. I think he's very talented. I think he has a real knack for sparing portrayals and just looking at the surface and letting you know what's underneath and letting you empathise with your characters. But here there is nothing. The three main actors, excuse me, <coughs> don't appear to be portraying any kind of underneath layer at all. They've got one guy who really loves the idea of war and two other people who are also there. It's terrible on almost every level. It's one of the worst films I've seen this year and it's probably the worst film Clint Eastwood's ever made. It's an absolute fucking embarrassment.